Okay, guys, you should be able to see the screen and hear me. I just confirm. And we can get started. Okay, let's see. Let me know you can see the screen, guys, and that you can hear me. Okay, great. Thanks, Nick. All right. Um, okay, so we, we've we've still got a lot of updates to do with the Parasite SEO, but Gunpow's had, had a few days off. Um, he worked overnight and got the Niche Navigator to a point where it's a pretty awesome uh, tool now within the Parasite SEO suite, and then he needed a few days off. So um, we've been kind of delayed in some of the updates that we wanted to get done, but it's okay, it will, it will come. Um, just need a, a few extra days, okay? So um, basically what, what I've done with this document that I shared previously is I've put in the information um, for upcoming webinars. This will be the final webinar where non-Parasite SEO Pro customers can come in, okay? So um, because this one's a bit niche, navigate, uh, niche navigator, and you know you kind of need the tool to be able to use it I've, I've left it open for anybody after this then all of the other webinars are going to be sort of behind uh, the membership okay so only members will get access to those okay so first um we got a new community platform okay you should have received an email okay i sent it out yesterday and it's coming from um, a company called Forento.io, okay? And it will be under the name of I Am Alphas, okay? But the reason I've done that is because we have got several tools. And so the community there will have different categories for different tools, for Niche Blaster, for Sepertag, for Parasite SEO Pro, um, Ad Blaster, et cetera, et cetera. So we can keep um, the conversations organized within that platform, okay? so. Um, you should have received that by now. And you will see here that we have sent it out, but just a few people so far have accepted, okay? So I need you to check your email and you will see a registration link, basically, and you'll be able to come in, okay? And inside here, we've got a, a simple community, okay? It's a very, very simple platform, but I kind of like that. And if you're able to... Um, access it right now. If you can later just respond to some of these posts so that I can see that the community um, thing is working okay. And that means that we've got a community that can be tracked, okay? Because on fa on Facebook, it's really difficult um, to try and track um, the different conversations. One minute sending you to Messenger and then, you know, I'm just going around the circles looking at the same conversations and same replies and same comments. It was driving me a little bit up, um, crazy, so I decided we needed a better solution. As simple as that one is, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It just needs to work, okay, so that we don't miss anything important. Okay, so all of the training stuff will go in there. That includes some of the previous stuff that we have done. I will put some um, other training that we previously charged for. I'll put some of that in there as well for example rapid affiliate was a 497 dollar course um i will put some of that training in here as well where i feel it is beneficial to what we're doing with the parasite seo pro and the niche blaster stuff specifically okay so um things like nurturing sequences for um email list building and stuff like that is, is kind of important for anybody who's doing affiliate marketing or anybody who's doing um any kind of email marketing for and driving traffic for you know businesses affiliate marketing anything like that okay so um just check that you have got that email if not then we will probably have to start manually sending them out everything was done via a csv that i imported from zaxa for everybody who, who had purchased um parasite seo pro okay 
All right, today what we're going to do is we're going to go through Niche Navigator, okay? But there's more advanced stuff. You can see down here, I've got it down to the basics, but I've got another tab over here, and it goes a lot more into detail. Okay, so we're getting to the real strategy stuff today, not just how to use the tool, but some of the best um, practices and tactics, if you like, um, for what we're going to be doing with them. Okay, now... One thing I did want to have ready before today was a, a trigger headline tool. We don't have it yet. Gunpow had some time off. What I did in the meantime is I created a GPT, okay? And this simple GPT, all you need to do is paste your article in here, and it's going to give you some headline ideas, okay? So all you do is just paste. You don't need to click any of these. Just paste it and put, um, press the Enter button, and it will give you five suggestions for headlines and it will tell you why it chose those suggestions as well okay so i'll put this into the chat so that you can access this okay so let's go with this there we go okay um we will have that headline too in a few days okay just giving him a few days off okay nick um there's no monthly fee. If you've been invited in, Nick, you're not going to be paying anything. There's, I have options for free and I have options to invite um, people with no charge, okay? We put, we had to fill in the, the framework that they provided us in order to set it up. And one of those frameworks was the, these paid options. But if you invite people in to register, there is no fee, okay? Okay, David, it's giving you an error. Okay, let me just check something. Okay, I'm going to have to do that after the webinar. Okay, I'm going to have to check that after the webinar, David. But there's about five or six people already in there. So the, the link has worked for some people. Maybe check and see if there's more than one link um, and we can get everybody in. If, if not, we'll do it manually after this webinar. Okay. So, um, it's, it's there it still needs to be populated we're going to have to put some training and stuff in there in different sections but there's no fee for it and, and it's basically just for people who have purchased um our software is niche blaster parasite seo etc etc okay okay so we still got more tools to come and, and quite important tools as well and the longer i dig into this kind of stuff the more ideas i've got okay so you can expect that there's going to be quite a significant difference between what we have today and what we will have in about three four weeks time okay it's just a matter of getting them put in there in order so that they make sense with what we've already got and with the strategies that we're going to be covering in these webinars okay so that there are more tools to come it's not a finished um product and and none of my products really are a finished product it's always an evolution okay as it should be because marketing really is an evolution it's a it's a, it's a journey it's not you know just here's the tool and we're going to maintain it and you know that's all you're getting kind of thing we need to be always evolving strategies we always need to be evolving um the tools to fit those strategies because as we do stuff and you know when you're in the trench in the trenches you're always learning something new there's always something um that comes up you think this is a better way to do that or that's a better way to do this it's just the way things are so we will always be evolving um these tools and you can see that's been happening as well with the other tools that we've done in the past as well okay um gone right back to the very first versions of um what we now have is serp attack and and the first versions of what we had with the IFTTT stuff when we were doing that before they started charging money for people to use um, IFTTT. We had various versions over about seven or eight years for, for those tools, for the IFTTT tools, and they were always evolving, okay? Even the video syndication stuff was the same as well. Um, a lot of that stuff will change over time, you know, for what works um, today and what works tomorrow can be completely different. So we always need to be um, kind of aware and alert about both 
changes and opportunities okay i always think about the opportunities because what you will find with the parasite seo stuff is that specific websites can do very very well today and you know tomorrow it's a different one right now it's linkedin that's the sort of top dog of the 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 free parasite seo places where we can post articles and previously it was medium i think there was an, another one previously called rebel mouse or something like that i could be wrong on that name but it was something that kind of name and it's changing all the time it's you know it's not every week it's changing but you know from time to time it does change and new new platforms come up okay so um we always need to be evolving and as we are evolving then the tool will evolve with it as well and that includes adding new new stuff or, or tweaking the stuff that we have got okay so there's still more to come and we're not finished okay i just gave him a few days off okay i'm going to do in the meantime while gun, gun pals having some time off i'm going to do some more um gpts similar to this one okay i will do some more gpts i will do one for the um the ee80 um kind of articles and that can be very very good if you want to create just one piece of content that is optimized um the way that Google really wants it to be optimized where you're going to be using expertise. You're going to be showing some expertise and authority and um, experience with products, especially with um, reviews. And to be able to do that, it needs to be done in a specific way. Okay, there's things that you need to um, input to be able to get that kind of article out. But what you can do with that once you have got it is you can use that for all the other articles to link to so it's going to be a kind of buyer intent um kind of article that you're using that for okay i'm going to cover that stuff in just a few minutes with the buyer and informational intent we'll go quite deep or reasonably deep into that okay um we're going to be moving webinar platform as well pretty soon it's not going to make a huge difference to you but the reasoning um, reason i'm bringing it up is because i'm probably going to do a couple of tests q a sessions with that with that system before we get into the real training stuff with that system um i had an option for demio to continue for another month or just cancel it because i purchased another one but i decided to stick with demio for one more month so in between we'll probably do maybe three or four q a sessions or something like that on the new platform just till we all get used to it because it will be a different um user interface etc okay now um the done for you services some people have been asking um you know questions about the weekly and monthly stuff that stephanie is doing she's she's running that on her own okay um she's doing the done for you services for niche navigator so if you create 30 articles with niche navigator she will take all 30 she will put it into linkedin and you know format it etc etc i'm going to come back to the formatting stuff a little bit later okay but what she's done is she's priced it so it's cost you less the more you order okay and she might have to take someone to to help her to do it but she's running that one on on her own right now and um i don't know how many customers she's got i know she's got a couple um it's looking quite good so far but there's some things that we will probably do to um improve it as far as um just some basic seo stuff essentially just some some basic seo stuff just so that we can re-optimize but you know one of the things I've, I've been noticing with this stuff with the parasite stuff is that when you go back in and re-optimize you can get a a bit of a boost in your, your your search results pretty quickly so even if you're putting stuff on there if you kind of leave a little bit of a gap to re-optimize later it actually gives it a boost okay it's just something i've noticed over the past few days and and that can be used to our advantage and i'll show i'll, I'll explain exactly how you can do that with um the stuff that i've been doing as well okay um so yeah she's got um she's got the the writing services the content not not writing the posting um service so it's posting and formatting etc as well and we're also going to introduce some done for you seo services we've got a couple of services right now for press release etc um but we're probably going to take this a little bit further specifically for the parasite seo 
and specifically for YouTube, it would work for both because both are kind of parasites in the sense that you can and you can get pretty aggressive with the link building kind of stuff for those platforms. Okay, YouTube, LinkedIn, Medium.com, etc. All right. Now, one thing I do want to introduce is a done for you video service. Okay. Now, this is not just a, a video service for the sake of us making videos. Okay. What we want to do is we want to create. Um, an article that's based on an article cluster. Okay, so say for example, when you're running Niche Navigator and you've got, um, well, basically you're gonna have a bunch of buy intent, commercial intent keyword articles created, okay? Now what I want to do, is what I want to introduce as a service is for Stephanie to create one video that is a buyer intent video that can get into all of those articles. Just one video goes into all of those articles, okay? And the reason I want to do that is because it will help with the time spent on the site. The reason for that is because it's going to be a sort of animated text kind of video. And you can see the kind of examples that we did with the pre-launch. Okay, it's not going to be exactly like these pre-launch videos because it's not pre-launch kind of thing. Okay, but you can see that we have the animated text. Okay, so that makes it a little bit more um, probability that people will spend more time on the actual page, on the actual article. Okay, and we can use that specifically for sort of call to action videos for whatever product you are promoting okay whether it's your own service whether it's an affiliate marketing product and just to make one video that will go in all of your articles your buy intent articles and even your information articles you can do that with as well okay it just gives us that extra sort of call to action kind of um, piece of content that we can use but it also will, will have some um, other benefits like the engagement for search engine optimization and also within the platforms as well whether you're using it for medium or linkedin or anywhere else um anywhere you can increase the, the time spent on on the page is going to be uh, a ranking signal to to google okay <coughs> so we we will introduce um those hopefully sometime this week just take a quick drink here joy we we are sort of going through um the a to z stuff in the webinars but yeah there will be um a breakdown of all of the tools you got to understand as well um that as we're building out the tools and new strategies come up i will get a new tool built and it doesn't mean that i had a a master plan at the very beginning of it to go and create 12 content tools or seven content tools okay it just means i'm spotting stuff when we're building okay i'm spotting stuff as we are doing stuff when we're in the trenches and therefore i go and get gunpow to build a tool specific for a strategy that we are putting together but these webinars will cover each and every tool as we go forward as well okay so we can break down these webinar recordings and put those with a little sort of checklist underneath um, each sort of cutout of that either demo or explanation of what that tool is for, okay? But there's there's no sort of um, step one, use this tool, step two, use that tool when it comes to the content tools, okay? The content tools are used in different scenarios, okay? So if you want to do affiliate marketing campaigns the best tool is the affiliate edge okay if you want to do content rewriting the best tool is the outlook edge and if you want to do um just um content that is based on somebody else's article that's ranking very well that you like then you reduce the the content edge etc okay so we're going to go through them all one by one and we will you know from that point we will start to um break down those replays into sections that, that will be easier for you to sort of consume and there, there will be a little checklist underneath each okay um 
Okay, so the rest of the up, upcoming webinars, you can see what's coming up here. Okay, I just left that in uh, um, so that people can see. Okay, now um, let's get into the proper training. We can, and anybody got any questions before we get into the training anymore? Um, David, not those style. That Those style are done with Canva. Okay, we cannot connect with Canva from the desktop tool like Niche Blaster because it's a different kind of code needed. Um, even though they've got an API, it's using JavaScript or something like that that Gunpal is not using within um, the Niche Blaster tool. So it's not possible for us to be able to create those kind of videos. Um, but you can do them in Canva yourself quite easily. It's just um, a matter of learning you know, the basics of how to create videos with it. I might ask Stephanie if she will do a video showing how it's done and, you know, sort of put that into uh, a training area. But she does them quite good and she, she's very, very good with, with the Canvas stuff. So she's quite proficient and been able to knock them out quite quickly as well. Okay. Um, Joy, I would I would not have a problem posting on my own LinkedIn account, but if you're going to be doing um, different niches, then you probably want a separate account for each. Okay, so if you're doing, you know, uh, 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 if you're doing an affiliate promotion this week and you're doing a different aff affiliate promotion next week, if it's in the same niche, then you should be fine. Okay, but if you're using different niches, then better that you have a separate account for different niches, okay, or services, whatever it is you, you might be doing, okay. All right, so let's get into the strategy stuff, okay. That's what most of us have been sort of waiting for and building up to, okay. So some basics about the Niche Navigator, which we're going to cover today. I mean, Niche Navigator is probably going to be the most used tool. But you need to understand what it is and what it is not. I had a question the other day. Um, somebody had asked, um, does that make the other tools not relevant because we've got Niche Navigator? No, it does not. It does not, not even close, okay? The, you've got to understand what it is and what it is not. Okay, now I'm just going to start this in, in the background here so that we can... Um, let me just do my settings over in the other window. to AI settings and I'll do it with a 3.5 turbo okay it just threw up a warning there to make sure you're using the, the new models of of um, chat GPT okay so that's running in the background okay so let's come back to the this what it is and what it is not okay now what it is, is the ability that we can go and create a whole bunch of articles that are both commercial intent and they are informational intent, okay, or transitional articles, as I, I like to call them. Um, the reason for that is, is that we can saturate any topic, any niche, any product launch as an affiliate, whatever you want to do, um, whether it's, you know, for services, anything. You'll be able to create enough content that is going to saturate that niche, okay? And we can always go back and re-optimize that content later once we, you know, we start to see some rankings and and there's things. There's always things that we can improve, okay? What it is not, it's not the sort of be all and end all of what we, what we can do with Parasite SEO. You might want to create better quality articles, but you don't need thirty articles, okay? You might want to create an article that is um, optimized for the EEAT, which we will have a tool in here probably in a few days that will create those kind of articles. It also will not go and reverse engineer and find content gaps like the other tools do, like the Affiliate Edge does and, 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 and Content Edge, okay? Those tools will go and reverse engineer. It will go and have a look at articles from other people and find content gaps, keyword gaps, and it will do SEO scoring, et cetera, et cetera, okay? they've got different use cases so it's not not just because we've got niche navigator 
um, we don't need the other tools. There will be different scenarios and different times where you will want to use them. I know that I will. Okay, and we will cover them when we go through the, the webinar series. Um, what we want to use this for is to be able to go and saturate a specific topic or a product launch as an affiliate or a service um, with sort of geographical locations if you're running a business, okay? Um, and that way, we're able to go and just mass produce content that, that we can quickly put onto platforms like Medium and LinkedIn. And we've got a whole um, range of optimization tactics that we can use, which I'm gonna cover most of these today. Okay, so in the sense that you can knock out a lot of content and you can saturate, it's probably gonna be the most used tool for most people. But it doesn't mean it's the only tool that you should use. There will be times when I will use Affiliate Edge tool because I think it's far, far better at doing what I need it to do for a specific promotion, for example, as an affiliate. Okay, there's just different scenarios that you're going to use different tools and they've been built for different scenar scenarios than to be able to do that. That's why I cannot say there's a, uh, you know, a step one, step two, step three of going through all of the content tools in one promotion. It doesn't work, work like that. Just different, there's horses for courses, as, as they say, it's just different scenarios where you're going to use different tools. For example, okay, if I am going to do an affiliate promotion with... Um, the top webinar tools for 2024, okay? I am unlikely to want to use the Niche Navigator. Why? Because I would be far better to use the uh, Affiliate Edge tool where I can put in multiple URLs from other people that do posts that are um, sort of multi-product posts or a list style post, okay? Does that make sense? So I don't want to create just informational and buy intense articles on, you know, just the topic of webinar softwares. When I can create the kind of content that Google is ranking on the first page, and you will see if you do those kinds of searches, if you do um, searches even for something basic like high ticket affiliate, if you just type in that keyword, you will see it's full of posts like 19 top, high ticket affiliate programs and 31 top high ticket affiliate programs. That is not going to be useful for, for the niche navigator. The niche nav navigator is not going to be useful for that kind of a post. Okay. But the affiliate edge is, and the reason why is because you can put in multiple URLs. Okay. And it's going to replicate that style. Okay. That's how we can get the list style posts from Parasite SEO by replicating what other people have done. Okay, so there's different scenarios of when you're going to be using it. So the answer to that question is, you know, it's not the only tool and, and disregard everything else. It just doesn't work like that. What it does do is give us the ability um, that we can knock out enough content that we can totally saturate. And this is finished already, this campaign, as far as the basic stuff before we get to the articles, okay? You see, it's super fast, really, really fast. Okay, now we've got our article suggested for buy it intent. You click on that, you can click on article content and start generating the content. Let's just do the first one. One thing to notice about this, you've got to check here, okay? You will get a pop-up when it comes to this point to say that it's finished and then you have to go and generate the articles. You, you have to checkbox the article that you want to run, okay? And you must remember to uncheck it when you go and check another one. Otherwise, it will try to do two at one time. But I find it does incomplete art articles if you do that. Okay, we do not want incomplete articles. But it doesn't take very long to be able to do this. So just checkbox one at a time. Click on the article generator. It will go ahead and do that. Okay, and you can see that we got the articles here for um, the informational. Then we got the articles here for the subtopic. Okay, now we had to do this with um, sort of semi-automation. We could not get it to do um, articles at the quality that we wanted with one click all the way through to go and create 30 articles. We could probably stretch it to be able to do 30 articles, but we found 
that when we were trying to do that, it was cutting off and not completing. And also the quality of the article content was not as good as what it could have been, okay? It just was not as good as what it could have been. Um, I've got an error here, I'm not quite sure why. Let me try another one. Just run this again. Could be something in my settings. So what we've done with this is we've got it to do section by section in the background. Okay, so we're not just saying like create 30 articles and here's the titles. What we're doing is we're giving it one article title and we're telling it to go and create an introduction and we're telling it to go and create um, the subheading content, et cetera, et cetera. So we're getting a deeper and a better article. Okay, so you can see this is starting to populate now. Okay, so we've got the first part, second part, et cetera, et cetera. And this will just keep building out and it's actually quite fast and it's giving about 250 words for each okay so we're able to go and do that but it's just a single click all you have to do is want to you know just keep coming back to it and click the button and let it go and create another one etc etc you can see that's filling up quite nicely now all right um okay tom you still want to get access to chat gpt plus I would try and create another account because I, I thought it was available to everybody. Which, which country are you in? Okay, Graham, if you're getting the same error, I'll have a look into it, but this is the first time I've seen it. This is the first time I've seen it personally. Okay, that task is completed, so it's very quick, very easy, okay, to be able to knock these out. Um, what we do want to do here, um, one of the things we want to add here is to be able to export it, ideally into Google Docs. If we can export it into Google Docs, it would be a, a massive time saver for a lot of people because we can save these articles in the Google Drive. Um, that's one of the things I've asked to, to get done. But you can see it's just very, very easy. That's two clicks and I've got a very good article. If I want to do more articles, I just have to go through them one by one. Okay, and just click on generate um, you need to have chat GBT plus if you want to use the turbo okay um, if you don't want to use the turbo there's chat GBT 3.5 in the AI settings when you go into the settings over here I don't want to open my AI settings because I've got my API key here and this <clears throat> um, webinar replay goes onto YouTube then people can see the API key etc so I don't want to open those settings but you have options there for 3.5 if that's what you want to use okay but when you get to the 3.5 turbo that is gbt plus okay okay so you can see that's working well in the background okay so i'm just going to move this over and let it do what it's doing okay but well, one thing to understand and and this is really important is that each piece piece of content that you're creating has a purpose and we need to we need to give it a purpose for for the strategy to work correctly okay what do i mean by that well first of all you've got um the ability to saturate and do topic clustering that's one advantage but it's not the it's not the overall goal for each piece each piece of content okay um each piece of content can have its own sort of goal, if you like. And the, the best way to think about this is what do I want to get from this piece of content? Okay, what's in it for me, this piece of content? Is it just an informational piece of content I'm going to put there and I'm going to use it as um, an opportunity to do an internal link or link over to my buyer intent articles? Or you can take a step further. You can get you know better into into uh, the audience building stuff, which is really really important. Okay, any good marketer is building an audience. It's probably the number one goal of any top marketer. Okay, why? Because you can remarket to them. It's your own traffic source, and those uh, people that you put into. Um, your audiences that you're building when you create a new piece of content they're interested to know okay those are the people that's going to help you with the search engine optimization optimization stuff later and um, because they will 
go to your latest video, your latest blog post or whatever, they will spend time on it. And so you've got those ranking signals, etc., happening. And, so, and plus they can give you some social proof just by having your views increase on things like YouTube and um, article sites like uh, medium.com, etc. Okay, so every piece of content needs to have a goal. The obvious goal and the, the easiest place to start is to make sure that you have a, a top of the funnel kind of um, giveaway <clears throat> so that you can collect email addresses. Now, I like to use Lead Blaster because it gives me that opportunity that I can collect email addresses, I can send them <clears throat> push notifications, etc. And I built it specifically for that purpose, okay? So you can create um, high quality lead magnets without having any landing page or without even needing uh, any thank you page or delivery page, okay? It's just a quick and easy setup, but you don't need to use that. You can create something as simple as a PDF, okay? And just have a very, very simple landing page. Um, we're gonna cover that kind of stuff in more depth in a later webinar. I'm just bringing it up now because you should be thinking of that for every piece of content. And what we, what we can do is we can put images that are clickable that you can send people over to landing page where you just collect the, the name, the email address, and you give them, you know, the giveaway, whatever it might be in exchange. Okay. Or you can send them to a page like a Chrome extension page where you can give them a checklist like this. Okay. So, so um, <clears throat> if you put that giveaway or that lead magnet into every single post, that's informational, okay, all the informational posts, then you've got a, a goal for each piece of content and your goal is to build your audience as well as being able to, you know, send traffic from there into your buy intent articles or to send them direct to affiliate links or whatever you want to do there. Um, you want to be building an audience as well, okay. It's really, really important and it shouldn't be, underestimated now I, I remember i was doing um i was even building lists before i really grasped how important it was and i was building quite significant size email lists as well and you know you've probably had the time you know a million times like the money is in the list it's true but you don't actually grasp it until it happens and when it does happen you're like holy crap I've ignored that all that time. How much money have I wasted? You know, it's that kind of situation. I used to have um, a, a staffing company, a recruitment company before I was doing the, the internet marketing products. And <clears throat> we used to get probably about 1,000 leads every week. Every single week, we would get about 1,000 leads. Okay, there's no joke, no, no, no exaggeration. That website that we had was doing about $4,000 per month just on AdSense. Um, and we were getting massive traffic and managed to get it ranking for some major keywords, like really high traffic keywords. And we were just, you know, the business was taking over nicely. And then the crash came in 2008 and we lost a lot of orders overnight because we were doing international staffing. We were sending people to go and work in places like UK, Australia, Canada, America, skilled workers, okay, where they could not get enough of the skilled workers. Like, for example, in America, the shipyards were always looking for skilled welders and fabricators. And um, in Australia, they were always looking for skilled sort of butcher, boner people for the, um, the, the meat factories and stuff there. And the UK is something different, again, like mainly hospitality stuff we used to do in there. And so we had this massive audience of people that were coming into a website, you know, every single day. And we were generating about 1,000 leads every single week. And my Aweber was filling up, okay? And I, I never sent them an email. Not once did I send them an email. Then in 2011, I started to create products, okay? I started to create marketing products. And, and the first product I created um, I built an email list and I still hadn't used that for about two or three months, probably even four months. I can't remember exactly, but I joined a Skype group run by a guy called Andy Fletcher. Probably most of you know him. And, you know, they were asking me 
you know how 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 good is your email open rates and um how many opens you're getting how many clicks you're getting and i said i haven't used it and they were all shocked really 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 shocked and so i sent an email out that day um for a book marketing social book marketing tool from the one of andy's tools and it made 440 dollars within a few hours and i was like really really shocked i thought oh man i didn't know about this i i, I did know about it but because i hadn't put it into practice i didn't grasp it i didn't fully grasp the power of it and so i sent out an email the next day and this one was for um it was a hosting service and it, it was some special deal that made fifteen hundred dollars okay and i was really shocked again i thought damn i've just made nearly two thousand dollars in two days and i haven't been using this email list of buyers that i have had for nearly four months you should always be building an audience okay it is really massively important okay so if you're not doing it and i know many people are not you really do need to start doing it okay it's just so important you will find um that it is responsible for most of your revenue as a marketer if you're doing affiliate marketing okay and it can generate tons of revenue if you're doing e-com and it can generate tons of revenue um if you're doing uh, a local business services okay, okay so you've got to be building your audience always so each piece of content if you use it just for that with the lead magnet you're going to win at least you're going to win an audience you're going to start building an audience okay and that is going to give you um some leverage that you can use your own traffic source that you can use any time that you want later okay very very important when it comes to the buyer intent stuff slightly different okay slightly different yes you can use it for audience building but you want to do something higher quality okay now i put a couple of examples here and the examples are the way that we use script blaster so in niche blaster we built a little tool called script blaster similar to what we got with the parasite seo all of these tools here on the left hand side we call these plugins okay we always have the same software framework, kind of like WordPress uses plugins. We use the plugins as well, okay? And so we have a plugin on Niche Blaster. It's called Script Blaster. And all it does is it will create video scripts, but it uses six different ad frameworks, like the Ada formula and um, pin, pin agitate solution formula, that kind of stuff. It does six different formulas. And also it will create a YouTube description and it will create the video script that you can narrate, either use your own voice, get someone on Fiverr, or go to um, one of the text-to-speech services, and you can get you know you can get that done if you want. So we give that away, and that is basically <coughs> sort of higher quality giveaway that we can use to get people to um, take a look at Niche Blaster. Okay, so one of the reasons i wanted to build parasite seo is so that i could saturate that market with multiple angles about ai video stuff i mean really saturate it. i'm not talking about one niche navigator project i'm talking about maybe 40 or 50 of them okay <laughs> just completely saturate the market so that i'm everywhere with this and that's sometimes what you need to do especially in the competitive market but you've got the edge in the sense that a lot of people <coughs> are using their own websites and it's going to take them um time and probably a lot of money if they want to rank for some of the keywords but you have the advantage because <coughs> you can use the parasite platforms and you can saturate the niche with the free platforms and you can also you know you know expect that you can knock out more content than they possibly could unless they're using a tool like this okay mm -hmm. Um, so that you've got that massive advantage and that's really why I wanted to build this at the beginning so when it comes to the the buyer intent giveaways for building your audience it's a different audience and what you want to do is you want to cut out the nurturing at that point whereas the the free stuff like a, a checklist a, a checklist like this one I've got with Lead Blaster okay <coughs> it's a nice piece of content etc it's like a mini course in there but there's nurturing to be done here, okay? <clears throat> Whereas the buyer intent doesn't actually have nurturing except for when you're using 
bonuses okay what i mean by that is if i'm giving script blasters a bonus then i'm directly sending them information from that point forward about niche blaster okay so the frito leads to um a nurturing sequence that is all by intent all of it okay so i might send them examples of videos that you can create with niche blaster and you know different ways that i can showcase that particular tool you can see as well how paul murphy does it um paul murphy he's a, a top affiliate what i like about paul is that he is he just seems like a normal guy but what paul does good is he's quite smart um in the sense that he he's been doing this stuff for a long time now and he's been consistently getting results right from day one um but he's he seems very very approachable when he's on the webinars but the main thing is that he just gets things done he just takes action gets stuff done and when you have a look um at the way he does stuff you can see he's got a facebook page here and he's talking about free magic traffic funnel all that is is a funnel that he has created in uh, click funnels and i think he did another one with kartra or one of those um one of those other, other services um the one that what's his name the the one that mike full sam has i know he's done one for them i think it's called groove um and what he does is he basically um tells people i'm going to give you free training on a magic funnel that generates tens of tens of thousands of dollars for me every month okay and so he's giving them something that is really buyer intent because they need to create an account with either click funnels or groove or Kartra, whatever one is using here um to be able to you know to to be able to use it so although he's giving it away for free he's going to get affiliate commissions And so you can see how that works okay so it's two different kinds of goals for your buy intent stuff and also for your informational intent stuff okay does that make sense it's quite an important distinction and yes you can link direct to sales pages with your buy intent and your informational intent if you want to there's no problem with that there's absolutely no problem with that what you want to do though is to make sure that they can see that there is a giveaway so that you, you can build your audience okay you want them to do both ideally click open in a new window go and get something for free get an email from them an email subscriber okay at the same time you can do an autoresponder sequence that gives you multiple times that you can market to them while you still have a link to direct to the sales page with your affiliate link in the same article okay you can do both let's just have a look at paul paul murphy a little bit more um, because his stuff is um it's kind of interesting for what we are doing okay and you can see here if i go to his youtube channel this might help some people to sort of really understand what we're trying to do with the niche navigator you can see these videos here um from his YouTube channel. Let me just go to the latest videos. Okay, this is for um, Russell Brunson's new product, Secrets of Success. Here's another one for Russell Brunson. Here's another one for Russell Brunson. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. You can see he's hitting it with multiple angles. Okay, he's hitting it in you know just multiple ways. That's what Paul does um, very very well okay he will basically cover it in different angles he will cover the topic with multiple videos and often i don't know if you're still doing it but often he used to have um a whole bunch of video links let me just open one from all the videos in the series inside yeah he's not doing it anymore He's got one or two, but he used to have like a list of all the videos he had done for that promotion all inside. It's kind of fiddly to do, which is why I built a tool to be able to do that. We have actually have a tool that does that and you can update it in seconds. And so if you did like eight videos about a specific product, that tool will put the links in for all eight videos in a single click. 
into the YouTube descriptions. And then if you update it anytime, you just one click, you update it and it updates all of the videos. It's kind of fiddly to do. Maybe that's why he stopped doing it. But he reckoned at that time when he was when he was first doing that, um, about three, four years ago, that that helped him to rank on Google um, quite often. And I think people just started copying him from that point forward. And then people like me created tools to automate it. Um, but you can see the way he does the promotions. He, he just hits it from multiple angles. And plus, he's got a lot going, going on with the email as well, with his email list. He's constantly sending them things out, sometimes two or three emails a day, which is fine if you've got an audience that wants to, to get that kind of content, that kind of information. It's perfectly fine. If people unsubscribe, that's fine as well. You know, they don't want that information. It's, it's absolutely okay. But what he's doing is he's covering it with, with multiple angles. And he's covering it with more content than probably other people are doing, which gives them the advantage. But if you look at how much content now compared to what we can do with the Niche Navigator stuff, I mean, this chalk and cheese, right? So you have a massive advantage with this kind of technology to be able to do this. And you don't have to accept every article that's here. You can just cherry pick the ones you want if you want to. You don't have to do all 30. It's entirely up to you. But that's basically some form of a sort of topical clustering that Paul does with YouTube, okay? Only we're doing it with articles. You can do it with YouTube as well if you wanted to, okay? So to be able to do that, you need to find your angles, okay? This is really important. If, for example... I'm doing a promotion for, say, Niche Blaster, okay, because it's a simple one to, to explain. Then I've got multiple ways that I can approach it. I can approach it with the angle that um, you never have to manually optimize a YouTube video again. Why? Because we have got a video re-optimizer tool that all I would need to do is upload the video, give it five minutes, okay, um, you give it five minutes, so you have to wait for YouTube to create the, the auto transcript, the, the closed captions kind of things. It does that automatically, but it needs a few minutes to be able to do that. Once that is there, then we can use the video re-optimizer tool in Niche Blaster and pull in that video, and it will pull in the transcript, and it will read the transcript, and then it will create a new title. It will create um, three paragraphs of text. It will create tags and hashtags, and even put the key moment timestamps. Okay, all in a single click, basically. And when it's able to do that, that, that means that I never have to manually optimize a YouTube video again. So that's one angle. Second angle could be something like um, four ways to do affiliate marketing videos um, within five minutes. Four affiliate marketing videos within five minutes kind of approach. Okay, we can do like the, you know, that kind of speed um efficiency um don't have to work hard let the software do the work kind of thing that's another angle and then we could do other angles where we can talk about like storytelling plugins okay and we can do other angles for different things so you're hitting it with multiple angles now what you would do or what i i will be doing for that exactly for niche blaster is running multiple niche navigator campaigns one for each angle okay and that means that I'm able to go and create content about optimizing videos. And then I'm gonna have links to Niche Blaster, but also I'm gonna be having a giveaway for Script Blaster, okay? Anybody wants to promote um, Niche Blaster, by the way, we can, we can give you um, the ability to be able to give away Script Blaster for that purpose, okay? So, um, that's a, an, an easy one to start with, okay? And, and it's a good one as well because it's monthly recurring and most people will co come in. Um, sometimes you get, you get a you know a lifetime sale and you're making $800, $800 or something like that. Um, and it's, you know, it's a nice surprise when it happens for, for a lot of affiliates. Um, but it gives us that ability that we can create multiple angles having the tool like Niche Navigator. So I would do for Niche Navigator, I, I would do for um, video optimization. 
I would do for video creation with AI. And I would do something else like um, video, um, easy video creation. I would take an angle that basically most of the video tools that you see on sales pages, they look very, very good in the demos and very easy to use in the demos. But when you actually get to start to use them, they've got a quite a steep um, learning curve to be able to use them properly. And a lot of people just give up because it seems like too much hard work, okay? And, and that's exactly why I built Niche Blaster the way I built it. It doesn't have a timeline. It just works on scenes. And if I added timelines to it, it become a poor man's Camtasia. And so that was my angle to begin with. We're not making a poor man's Camtasia. We're making an easy to use video tool. Okay, that's basically the angle. So those kind of angles you can fit in again and again and again and again, and you can run different campaigns. That's total saturation at that point. And I could not do that with affiliate edge tool or content edge tool because nobody else is really taking those angles because you know niche blast is kind of unique in its own way it's an easy to use video creator specifically not using timelines because we don't want it to be a per man's camtasia we just want it to be a simple to use video tool we want it to be a simple to use video re-optimization tool i don't know other tools are doing that i'm not but you know that's our unique angles and um, so i couldn't use the other tools for that i could only use niche navigator for that and vice versa for other kind of angles as well okay so find your angles and use it for multiple campaigns it doesn't mean you have to use all 30 articles but the more you use the more content you get out there the more chance you're going to be driving traffic the more eyeballs you're going to get on your offers okay it's just a numbers game at that point even though there are things that we can do to take it further with off-page SEO and even with on-page SEO and even with um, the engagement within the platforms as well. Okay, so let's see. We've got some questions coming up here. <clears throat> yeah, Dave, I'll give you a copy of the doc. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, we want the previous one as well. It's just got some information about the webinars and anything on here about the, the strategy stuff is is on the, the one i just gave you but here's the i'll call it this the first one yeah there you go okay um let me just grab a drink if you've got any more questions you can ask I've got my black tea and my ginger tea. <laughs> I'm drinking between the two. All right. <clears throat> uh, David, is it possible to add search volume competitive stats for each suggested article? Um, so you can pro prioritize the content generation. Um, we can do something. I don't know yet how far the, how far we can take it. Um, if you're familiar with the keyword intent tool, then we have the API for that. Okay, so there's things that we could um, take some ideas from keyword intent that we think could fit into Parasite SEO. I just don't know yet how far we can take that specific um kind of approach until i start doing it okay uh, it's the same with a lot of the stuff that we do i don't actually know how it's going to be in the end until i start doing it and it ends up you know something completely different and you know far more um advanced or far far deeper than, than i had originally intended um so yes we can do it and we have got some things in there for the parasite seo we've got some search volume stuff in here let's see if i can find <clears throat> if i bring this over here we're going to, get into identification of buyer and commercial and tank keywords you see we've got search volume competition cost per click okay so you have got something there um but what you're talking about is 
um, the competitiveness, like keyword difficulty. Okay. We would have to make our own sort of guesstimation of that. Okay. There's nothing in the API that we use that we'd be able to give us that, you know, Google just doesn't give that information. You, we have to work it out according to um, the authority of a, a web page versus um, the intent of the keyword versus um, the competitors that you've got and how many backlinks they've got and all kinds of stuff goes into those kind of algorithms um, for people to be able to use, um, to, to put keyword difficulty within the, 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 the keyword tools. And because it's not our main sort of um, keyword research is the keyword intent tool, for example, it's not our main tool, okay? Um, not by quite a long shot. What, what we can do is we can try and take it a little bit further, but it's not going to be as in-depth as what you will find from from other keyword tools when it comes to the keyword difficulty. We can just guesstimate it, okay? But we can do that, but we do have something there. Um, and you can put this kind of information, these kind of keywords into other tools as well, just to be able to get a, a quick overview. One of the best keyword tools, and probably one that we should add the API for, um, if I go into Google and I type in here, Click funnels let's give it a second okay when we click in here you can see that we've got all this nice information here that comes from the keywords everywhere Chrome extension this is better than many many keyword tools that you will come across and it's very very inexpensive okay you can install the Chrome extension. Yeah, Michael, I'll, I'll, we'll probably have to do it manually. Yeah, we'll probably have to do it manually and, and send out the information. We did send it out and some people have come in, but I don't know why not everybody has got it. I'll try and resend automated from their system and see if we get more people in. And then we have to do the rest of the people manually. But yeah, we, we will do that. Well, you've got, okay. So you want to do it for the articles. Okay, I see what you mean. So these articles here are based on the keywords that we found here. Okay, so for example, we got the suggested articles here, 10 of them, okay. Um, these are supposed to correspond to the keywords that we find here, okay, and here, and here. This is where we're supposed to be, that's where it's supposed to be drawn from. What I can do is we can add into the prompts for the articles um, some information, maybe an extra tab here. So this article was based on the keyword which has search volume and whatever competition um, that the Google API tells us, but that's just competition for people doing things like um, Google ads. Okay. It's not an SEO competition. It's a competition for people or, or, of people who are doing ads around that keyword. Okay. So yeah, we can do something with that. It's just an extra prompt, but it will be an extra tab here. Yeah. Okay. Good idea. Good idea we can add, add that in okay but let's come back into the keywords everywhere because this will give you a whole bunch of information some of the stuff you can do with this is is really really um surprising to a lot of people who don't use it so much or maybe they've got it but they haven't actually used it so much um for example here mailchimp He's not rank, he's ranking on page one, but he's not ranking like the top of page one. But when you hover over where it says search traffic, you can see that URL gets 3,700 search volume per month. Okay. And you can see it's ranking, the page itself is ranking for 62 keywords. If I click on that, then it's going to open up and it will tell you the estimated traffic 
that they're getting for that particular keyword. So the actual keyword click funnels in one word is only getting 76, but click funnels two words is getting 2000 because he's number two. And that's a good tip. And you can, we can use that in separate attack, by the way, anybody has got separate attack, you've got the possibility to be able to force the search for something like this, where it's a typo or um, not written in the way it was supposed to be written. But a lot of people are searching for it. You can actually do CTR clicks on separate attack with that. But you can you can spot opportunities like that, and and be able to you know see where people are getting traffic, the exact keywords mm -hmm. that is driving them traffic. It's totally underestimated. There's keywords everywhere too. Um, and you can see more information about the actual website, 1.27 million and traffic per month, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see total keywords here. It's nearly 80,000 keywords, but for that web page, that one page, you can see what keywords that can give you a whole bunch of keywords that you might want to sort of sprinkle throughout your content. Michael found the email, good. Um, no, you don't have to pay anything, Michael. You don't have to pay anything. You do not need to pay up anything because I've invited you by email. You don't have to pay anything. I just had to follow their format to go and create the community, the membership area. Um, but no, it doesn't cost you any money. All right. So let me come back. I kind of lost myself. I went off. Okay. So, um, content assets versus attention span okay let me explain that okay content assets is something that somebody might do like okay let's do i'll show you an example if i do high ticket affiliate programs do the search and we come down here okay have a look at authority hacker have a look at diggity marketing okay you can see you can see he's building an email list come down you can see this is a long post he's got 23 different pieces um, um, high ticket affiliate marketing programs in here nicely formatted probably took hours and hours and hours probably took about 20 40, 40 hours to create something like this okay now that's maybe even too short because he's done a whole bunch of research you know it could have been a lot more this is probably about a week's work to create something like this. That's what I call a content asset. Okay. That's a content asset. This again from, from Matt, um, <clears throat> they've got a black Friday deal on, by the way, for affiliate labs. I'm probably going to join it myself. And it's a very, very good program that they're teaching some really cool stuff. And you can see again, it's probably about a week's work to put that kind of information together. It's not just writing. And the formatting it's the research that goes behind it these are what i call content assets okay and content assets okay versus attention span of um, optimized content which is what we are doing okay this is what we are doing parasite seo pro was not designed to create content assets you couldn't do that with a tool you could do parts of it okay but you still have to sort of um, put it together yourself what we're doing instead is um, attention span optimized content okay the optimized content being that we are optimizing it for um, the search engines we're also optimizing it for conversions okay you've got to understand that in that environment of places like Facebook, where you can post stuff, um, medium.com, LinkedIn, there's a lot of distractions, okay? Massive amounts of distractions. And when you have a post like I just showed you there from Authority Hackers or from, from um, Matt um, Diggity, he's got people on his site where they are just focused on that one article, okay? It's not so much distractions. He puts the best content assets into that site. And um, he probably spends, to get something like that done, $1,000, $2,000 maybe, to get some a piece of content like that done. But it will bring in traffic for years and years and years and years once, once it starts to rank. But of course, he has to do a whole bunch of backlinks, et cetera, to make that rank. 
okay, because of a lot of competition. Versus what we do, attention span. We cannot create long form articles. We do not want to create long form articles. We want to give them the information as quickly as possible. Okay, you want to do it in a tone that they can read and it's easy to read and you know they can just skip through it so to be able to get some information. This is why it's really, really, really important that we have some giveaways, some what, what we call content upgrades. Okay, content upgrades is basically a lead magnet. Could be a PDF, could be a checklist, could be anything. Okay, software, free software, etc. Okay, that's why we want to have that there as well. So when we're doing our attention span optimized content, we're thinking about what, what I call environmental optimization. Environmental optimization in this sense means that they're on a place like LinkedIn or medium.com. There's a lot of other suggestions for articles and pop-ups and all different kinds of stuff happening, okay? Um, you do not have the ability, in my opinion, to do, you know, 3,000 word articles and expect them to read all the way through, okay? I don't even read all the way through in any of those articles. I skim them. I think most people do because we don't have that amount of, you know, attention span for that kind of thing. We have done the prompts in such a way that we do not want long form content, okay? We do not, we, we want it short enough to give them um, good enough information um, with calls to action where we've got the conversion focused on the calls to action. So you've got to understand that that is a major, major part of what we're doing. Okay. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because um, I expect as we go forward that some people are going to say, why can't we do content like this? Well, you can in a way, in, in the sense of you would put those kind of article URLs into the affiliate edge tool and then you would see what comes back from the, the from the, from the AI when you're using Parasite SEO. Of course, we can we can adjust the prompts to do longer form content, but that longer form content therefore it, it soon becomes not suitable for the Parasite sites. It becomes better suitable for your own website because it becomes a content asset. Okay, just understand that difference because it's really important, especially when we're churning out so much content. Okay, it's not designed to be 3,000 word articles. We don't want 3,000 word articles. What we want is articles that give them enough information that they want to know more and hopefully we can get them onto an email list at the same time, okay? So deliberately designed like that because when they're on those platforms, there's all kinds of stuff to distract them, okay? We cannot expect that people are going to be spending, you know, 40 minutes to read, read a 3,000 word article and, and absorb everything now. You need to, it needs to be short, punchy and to the point, okay? I'll cover this in more detail in another webinar, okay? I've put down here, this is a, just for me, okay? I'm, I, I need to remi remind myself that we're gonna be covering that in another sort of webinar, okay? So that takes us more into the tactical stuff. That's the basic stuff, okay, that we just covered, okay? What it is and what it is not, Every piece of content is a goal, buyer intent versus informational, and how we use the buyer intent and informational for different types of giveaways or lead magnets for different purposes, okay? The buyer intent, you basically, you're cutting out the nurturing, okay? The transformational, informational articles, you need a little bit more nurturing, okay? Just two different kinds of audiences. The buyer intent can sometimes be easy to rank and it can sometimes be harder to rank dependent on, on the competition. That's why you want to find your angles, okay? So you can hit angles that other people are not hitting. It's all about the angles at that point, especially with the commercial intent kind of um, buyer keywords. <coughs> okay, and the, the, the content assets versus attention span. Another thing to talk to mention about this is that if you've got competition like I just showed you there for high ticket affiliate sort of, um, 3,000, 5,000 word type posts, then you really don't need to be using different angles. You must be using different angles if, unless you want to go and spend a week creating a content asset and waiting for months for it to rank in your own website. You would not put a content asset on a parasite, okay? You just would not, be so, it's just a waste. 
and it's hard to reuse it again. Even if you took it off and put it on your web website later, it's harder to reuse it then, okay? Um, and if you create a content asset, it's going to invite backlinks, okay? So you really want something like that on your own website when it comes to a content asset. Whereas this stuff that we're doing, we can multiply what we're doing here just in a few clicks, okay? It's very quick, very simple, very easy. Knock it out, different angles, and just keep banging away at it. It becomes a numbers game, okay? Then we can go and find the angles that they possibly cannot find, even with, you know, two weeks' work within one article, they still cannot hit all the different angles that we can hit, okay, with automation. And a lot of these guys know that too. I know that Matt's doing some stuff with AI and he's ranking, you know, for tons of keywords and he's got set up some tests just with AI websites and, you know, getting a whole bunch of traffic with just AI content. So these guys are, uh, they're aware of it as well. Whether that changes the way they work going forward, I don't know because I'm not part of the affiliate lab, but I'll probably join it just to find out what they're doing because he does a lot of tests, which is very, very good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, I, when I'm on this topic of AI content, I saw a post, I'll put it into the Facebook group later. I saw a post on Twitter and it was a guy talking about how they hijacked 350,000 um, traffic per month from another website. <laughs> and what they did was they, um, got the sitemap of a website that was driving all that traffic. And when he got the sitemap, they broke down the sitemap into article topics and headlines. And then they used AI to go and generate content. And they created 1,800 pieces of content within a month. <coughs> and they posted it, you know, just one after the other really fast. There was no sort of scheduling strategy, it just when it's created, optimize it get it get it live kind of thing they must have had a team behind it they ended up taking a lot of a lot of the traffic from the other site where they had copied the information from the site maps so if anybody's thinking that ai content won't rank it's just not true what is important is is the information is the information um useful is it helpful does it help solve a problem does it help to um make a decision whether it's you know like a review post or something like that and that's really all that matters it seems right now but that can change with google at any time okay but that, that's a true story i'll post a link and uh, for that that twitter post into the facebook page it's interesting um so that gave me ideas what if we could do that with the parasite seo okay so i'll, I'll find out when gunpal comes back if we could do something like that um, and if we could, then it is really, really, really important that we're able to export automatically into Google Docs because that would be, that would be, you know, just massive amount of content if you wanted to go for like 1800 um, posts or something like that. But the thing is as well, the, the buyer intent that takes me nicely into this point here. Okay, the buyer intent stuff. Um, you don't need 1800 articles. Okay. Um, don't know if any of you are familiar with a company called, um, content Mavericks. I've been reading Chris's stuff for, for quite some time. He used to work with AppSumo and he's got some interesting stories about, you know, how he's created his content system, um, that is really built for your own website, not for parasites. But he talks a lot about the buyer intent and information intent as well. And what they do is they create four pieces of buy intent content for every one piece of informational intent content. Why? It gets less traffic but higher conversions. Okay. He when he worked at AppSumo, they had something like 150 articles. <clears throat> and from that, only about 20% of them were really driving traffic. So he analyzed what those were, you know, and he got some sort of commonality between them and started to create more content um, like the ones that were driving traffic. Then he realized as well that the buyer intent traffic, although it had much, much 
uh, less amounts of traffic, it was converting at a much, much higher rate, okay? I think they were converting about 2%. He got it up to about 8%. And then Noah Kagan said to him, we want to um, change the goals of what we're doing from revenue-based to lead generation-based, okay? So I think, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, they were getting about 2,000 leads every month for AppSumo. Noah wanted it to be Noah, Noah Kagan, the guy who, the main guy at, at AppSumo. Um, <clears throat> he wanted to get it over 10,000 uh, 10, leads per month. Okay, imagine you've got email lists, like half a million, you want another 10,000 a month. Um, that's because it's their own traffic source. Okay, they're not relying on Google or any ad networks or anything like that. They've got their own traffic source and they can market to them anytime they want, multiple times um, a day and multiple times a week, etc. And so what they did then is they, they started to um, figure out how to get more leads and how to get the conversion rate up. He, he did manage to do it. Chris managed to do it. He managed to get it up to 13,000 leads per month before he left there. And they took the conversion from 2% to 8%, okay? I'll put a link into a couple of his courses. It's, it's very, very, very interesting stuff. If you like that kind of stuff, um, I'll put a link into the Facebook page for those two specific courses you want to get. One costs only $5, another one costs only $47. I'll put the links in later. I'll even give you a bonus if you buy from my link, if he's got an affiliate um, option for that, okay? So... This is, you know, something that we need to take into account as well, even with the parasites, that the buyer intent keywords, they might have less traffic. Um, they might even be harder to rank, but that's where the money is, okay? That is where the money is. So even if we did put something into the keyword tool, um, David, then, it, you know, we still want to go after those other keywords as well, okay? It's definitely you know, chalk and cheese when it comes to what you can expect to get from it in the sense that if you put 10 buy intent articles versus 20 um, informational intent articles, then the time you're spending with the formatting and everything else, you might have been better to do instead 20 buy and intent articles, okay, because that's where you're going to get most return, okay. This is suitable for affiliate marketing, mostly. It probably will work for other things as well, but I'm, I'm thinking mainly affiliate marketing for this one. <clears throat> and again, you're going to need a multi-angle approach if you want to do this with, you know, more content. You, you need a multi-angle approach. Whereas in the Niche Navigator, we've got a, we've got a ratio of one to two, okay. we got um, one buyer intent for two informational intent. If we have a look, where did I put the tool? If we have a look in here, we got the subtopics, we got 10 articles, we got the informational, we got 10 articles, and the buyer intent, we got 10 articles, we got a ratio of one to two. Okay. It doesn't mean you need to use all 30. You might just want to run that with different angles and, you know, just take 10 articles that are buyer intent and put 30 articles onto these sites that are just by intent. It's perfectly okay to do that, but the way we have created this was for topic clustering ratio, okay? It's just a different ratio that I've used. Um, if you compare this to what Chris is doing with Content Mavericks, it's two different things. He's doing the content as assets. They're basically content assets and they take a lot of work, okay? So when he's creating content, it's gonna be similar to what you've just seen with the um, Authority Hacker and, 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 and Matt Diggity stuff. That's content assets kind of stuff, but because we are doing automated, we have to go this way. Well, we don't have to, but you know, it's just better if you want to do the topic clustering, okay? But what we can do is you can run it three, four times with different angles and just take the buyer and 10 keywords. That would be well, that would work perfectly fine as well, but it's not going to compete with those guys unless we're using multi-angles, okay? It's the only way that you can get around them is by outworking them, 
in the sense that you're creating more pieces of content, not in the sense that you, you've done 40, uh, an article that takes 40 hours of research, okay? Um, which we don't need to do anymore anyway with AI, but still, just got to understand the fundamentals of it, okay? Um, let's get into some more of the sort of tactical stuff. Um, your call to actions in LinkedIn, what we can do is we can add, uh, you can make them clickable. For example, if you have a look at this guy here, I type in profit singularity. I always have problem trying to say that word. Okay, if I go into LinkedIn, it's kind of important. See here, free report. He's got a link and he's got this is clickable as well. Okay, that takes them to a free report, which is basically part of the sort of top of funnel um, into that affiliate program. Okay, that's an affiliate link. And we come down here again, he's got a clickable link. We come down here again. And it's a link to join a webinar. Okay, um, you can do that very, very easily. But you have to upload your image first. And then once you have uploaded your image, then you can click on the image and click on edit. And what you will find when you do that is that you will have this show here that you can see down here. You can put the link, which can be an affiliate link or anything else. But notice down here as well, it's got the alt text. Put your main keyword in there. If it's a re re review for click funnels, then you're going to be putting Click funnels review kind of keyword in the old text, okay? Um, and that's just you have to click it once it's once it's embedded. Then you click it. Then you will see the edit options in there, okay? And somebody was asking about that the other day, so I had to put this in here just to make sure that everybody can see. You can also embed videos, okay? You can embed by using that embed icon here, and you can put in a YouTube link, okay? You can also upload videos into, into here as well. I don't know if that would be any better for SEO. I'd rather just put in a YouTube video. Okay. Another thing to consider, if, you, if you're doing your own LinkedIn formatting, use the quotes, okay? It just helps to break up your content. It just helps you to break up your content for the purpose of having a piece of content that is um, easier to read, okay? so that people can skim for it faster because they are going to skim. Another thing you might not know, that I only found out as well, is that you, they, they have an audio version of LinkedIn as well. So your articles can be um, done with text-to-speech. You can see here the open immersive reader. If I click on that, what it does is it opens this up like this. Now you can click on here. I'll let you in on a secret. Your team is just a Which is kind of interesting, especially when you are doing articles created by AI, because although the AI stuff is, it can, it can appear a little bit hyperbolic and a bit too enthusiastic when it comes to the writing. But when, it, when it's done in a video, it doesn't sound like that at all, okay? It actually suits video very, very well. And that style of, that, that kind of excited, enthusiastic, um, hyperbolic kind of hypey um, copy that it does, okay? So it actually suits um, that kind of thing as well. I haven't figured out how we can use this for SEO, but I just spotted it, you know, a couple hours before we can in, come in the webinar, but I'm pretty sure we can do something with that. I just need to give it some thought. Okay, let's come back up here. Any questions? Okay, um, internal linking. Okay, this is this is important. Okay, here's what I'm suggesting that we do. Okay, and I will show you some examples of this as we're putting it up. Stephanie's going to be putting up um, probably bit, about twenty or thirty articles for me this week. Okay, and I will show you exactly what what how we we're going to do this. We're going to split it for buyer and informational. 
okay there's going to be different internal linking strategies but what we're going to do is we're going to put links once once a full campaign has been done say for example i've got 30 articles i've got 10 buyer intent articles i'm going to put them in one section of each article for all 30 articles okay so for example if i've written a post i will have somewhere in the middle <clears throat> Uh, or even down the bottom, related articles, okay? And then we'll have all the buyer intent articles, links, in every single article that we put up. We have to finish a campaign before we can do that, okay? Um, and that's part of the done for your service as well. Stephanie will add that at the end of the campaign, which is posted everything. But also what we're going to do is we're going to do informational article links, but only on the informational article um, pages, okay? So if you've got 20 informational articles, then what we will have is we will have, still have the 10 by intent article titles, but we will also have 20 informational titles in here, okay? And we're doing the, the, the internal linking in this, as a sort of parasite SEO strategy, okay? It's not what you would do in your own website. You wouldn't do it in a WordPress site, for example, but we can get away with it here and it could possibly drive a lot more traffic because these sites get a lot of traffic naturally, okay? So the, the informational pieces of content will have both the buy intent article links and the informational intent article links all your links for, from the same campaign but the buyer intent articles will only have the 10 buyer intent article links all at one time okay at the end of the article um, we could even try and put it in the middle but i wouldn't want to put that before call to action okay you want to put it after your call to actions you don't want to distract them so better to go in the end okay so that's the strategy that we're going to be doing and you will see that in action this week when stephanie's put all my my 30 articles, my first 30 articles up, okay? So the buyer intent in one section, informa information intent in another section, and only the information intent articles get the information intent links, okay? Buyer intent only just link to each other, but all the informational articles will link to the buyer intent and all the other art articles as well, okay? Um, so that's basically what we're gonna do with that, okay? Now, um, the final thing I wanted to cover Okay, now rank tracking, we still have to take the rank tracker tool a little bit further. At the moment, the rank tracker tool is a tool that we built for YouTube. It's asking for web, um, website or video URL, but if you put in a website URL, it can only give you the rank from the Google, okay? We need to expand on this so that if it's a video, it will give you YouTube rank, Google video rank, and, and Google rank as it is right now. But when you put in um the linkedin articles then what we want to do is to be able to put more than one url in here and a whole bunch of keywords that we you know that we get from the ai in here and you want to be able to find your rank for google and for bing and if i can think of anything else that makes sense maybe yahoo but i'm not sure about that maybe just google and bing and um, we need to take it further um, no, for, for this tool so that we can do some kind of you know quick check and don't forget with this any campaigns that you do within these tools that we got our desktop tools you can save the projects onto your computer and bring it back in anytime and you just run it again anytime that you want okay but don't forget as well give it at least for articles give it at least 48 hours um, or 24 hours to be able to see if you got rankings okay even on Parasite, just give it some time. You can't expect as soon as it's published that you will have rankings that might not even be indexed by then. So, but they do index fast. Okay, so we will have some updates done for that. I'd written this actually at the point where um, I was expecting we were gonna have some updates, but Gunpal needed a few extra days off. Um, what we want to do though is when we start to see rankings, we want to do a little bit of re-optimization, okay? Um, and what I mean by that is things like more images. Now, more images, I would say that you could do about five images um, per post uh, minimum, okay? 
how do we get five images? You can get AI to generate them. We don't have a tool for that yet, um, but we will build that in with the, the DALI 3. But we need probably a week, maybe two weeks before we build that tool. But we want to put in images. AI images are better than stock footage images, okay? Stock footage images can actually harm your SEO, okay? It can harm your SEO. Whereas the AI images, because every single one of them is unique, it won't harm your SEO, okay? So we want to have AI image generator into Parasite SEO. We haven't got it yet, but we will definitely get it. If anybody can recommend another tool, um, let me know. But otherwise, um, I've been trying to build a separate GPT for that, okay? You can see I've got Visual Blogger System, but it doesn't always work that great with ChatGPT, but I'll give you the link to this anyway. But if I put in here, um, turmeric powder, it's my typo. It should start to create an article. No, it's not an article, I mean an image, okay? And this has been programmed to, to create five articles, uh, five images. put the link in here um david yeah the, the, the automation um if we can if we can export to google docs that's where where it will be done yeah um so you can just copy paste you can see it's actually quite decent i put the link it's a gpt that i made okay very very simple just keep the the keywords kind of broad okay and you can tell it to go and create like five articles. Um, well, you can see it's quite decent quality. Not too bad. Sometimes it doesn't give you good output. I, I did one um, for, for yoga, okay? And, and it was just giving me some weird, it was, there was no consistency to it. Um, so there'll be people doing yoga at the beach and there would be people doing yoga um, next to some high-rise buildings like in the city. Um, there was no consistency of characters and stuff like that. But if you're talking about stuff like this, like turmeric or green tea or stuff like that, you will get quite good quality images. But when it comes to um, people, it's we, we, we're not getting the, the character consistency. So if I wanted to do five articles, have the same you know, character in each one, I'm not getting that consistency. But this is just a quick GPT that I created um, earlier today because I needed something. I wanted to, us to have something. So you, you've got two GPTs that I've created, given to you today, okay? You've got this one and you've got one for the headlines, okay? You've got one of each and you can tell it as well what size you want so you can say like create an image that is you know big enough for a youtube thumbnail or whatever you whatever the sizes are i need to get the sizes i'm not sure maybe i can put in those original prompts that you can ask for a youtube thumbnail etc i'll play around with it maybe later today if i get time okay um let's see what else yeah, the re-optimization, okay? So you want to put more images. That's, that's your, your easy re-optimization opportunity, okay? Um, I would also do first sentence rewrites. Why? Because when ChatGBT writes content, it usually will start off with some something like in the vast world of search engine optimization um those kind of that first introduction that first sentence is often a giveaway it's ai generated content if i see that i'm probably i'm aware of that it's ai but you know if it's going to be like a review kind of thing i'm probably not going to read it okay because i know it's generated by ai if i'm looking for a review 
I think is better. I read something that looks like it's been created by a person, even if AI assisted it. So you want to change your first um, first sentence. Okay, so let's see if I can do it here. Maybe I can. Maybe I can. Let me see. This is AI generated content. I think it was. Let me try one more. So I can show you more clearly what I'm talking about. This is definitely AI. And that's a parasite as well. It's um, a paid for parasite. That website is not very fast. Wow. This is definitely AI. Okay. You can tell by the headlines, got the colon. Okay. You can tell immediately, not just that, but the first sentence is usually the giveaway um, for these. The profit singularity breakthrough edition promises to revolutionize. That gets overused by AI. Okay. So we can take that and here's here's a little trick we can go over to cloud and from anthropic okay cloud ai <clears throat> oh, it's the wrong one hold on i need to fix that it was the wrong one <clears throat> Okay, just put, can you rewrite this? And you can see. <clears throat> I've taken this, I'll put this into, into the Google Doc actually. Put it on the bottom. Call this cloud so you can see for yourself. And this is a good way to do that first sentence. Okay, so we're taking that and turn it into. Turn it into this. Uh, just click on that. So you just do your formatting, etc. But this sounds more like human, okay? Much more like human. And all we did was add one line of text. That's all we did. So you can see for yourself, this, this is much better, okay? You can do the same headlines as well, okay? You can tell when it's a chat GBT generated headline because of the colon is always there, okay? In that headline generator I gave you earlier, the, the GPT that I created, I asked it about five times, remove the call and just have, just have one sentence, and it kept producing headlines with the call on, okay? So this is another way you can get around it, okay? I can just do the same thing again. All I need to do, take the headline, and I'll just grab this. We're, this time I'm going to let it know it's a headline. They do not have an API yet. If they have an API, then it could be very, very significant for us, for the Parasite SEO. They do not have an API. 
okay so it's created something but you can go and say to okay create five different versions okay so he's got what's the deal with profit singularity breakthrough um does it actually rev revolutionize affiliate marketing okay revolutionize gets overused okay um please can you create five more creations and do not use the word revolutionize okay so you can just get five more now it's using colon <laughs> Okay, so we got very quick and very easy. That's how to not sound like chat GBD. Okay, go to Claude. Okay, I'll put the link in for Claude here. It's free. You can use Claude for free. They have an, an upgraded version as well, a pro version. The cost, I think, the same as chat GBT. I haven't taken the pro version. But this is a pretty good way that you can stop your content sounding like chat GBD. Okay, very quick, very easy. Um, if they have an API, we can automate that, but they do not have an API right now. All right, I think <clears throat> we're getting uh, towards the end. Yeah, just one more thing. Okay, this is important if you, you I'm, I'm not sure which websites will allow us to be able to do this, but I was reading an article by the Search Engine Journal, and I noticed on my telephone that they are always on Google Discover. I mean, really, a lot of times the search engine journal articles are on Google Discover. Now, if you follow the conversations on places like Twitter and LinkedIn about Google Discover, you will find that people are driving literally tens of thousands of, of hits to their articles. And there's different optimization um, information for Google Discover in both LinkedIn and Twitter communities that talk about this stuff. And <clears throat> one of the things came up from Search Engine Journal is um, to use this size, okay? This size works best for them. And it does work for them because they are probably all the time now on LinkedIn. But you can make images 1600 by 840. Now you can ask AI to do that for you. I don't know if you're gonna get exactly that size. It needs to be tested. Um, if you're doing screenshots, you wanna make sure it is that size. You don't want to resize it later. You want that size to begin with, with your first version of the, of of, um, of an image. <clears throat> you probably only have control of this if you're doing it on your own websites, but it's worth testing on the different Parasite platforms, okay? You might be able to use it. Um, and then if you're using the headline generator tool, what you can do, if we go in here, let me just grab that guy's article. So I'm not stealing it, I'm just wanting to show you how this works. Let's grab it from here. Now if I go in here into the headline tool, all I need to do Based in the article. <clears throat> and what we can do from there, grab a headline. Put into clog. <laughs> and that's for five more variations. And there you go. <laughs> it's still using, but not all the time. It's still using colons, but not all the time. There we go. That's how we can stop things looking like AI. Okay, nice and easy. All right, I think that's all I got actually, but I, 
I hope I haven't missed anything out. Okay. You get value from this, did you get some good tips? Learn some stuff. <clears throat> okay, so we're back on Tuesday. Tuesday will be a Q&A, and we will use the new webinar platform. Um, so there might be some glitches, but that's why it's just a QA. and a um, So we will do a QA and a on Tuesday. And then on Thursday, we're back with more training. And then this time next week, again, more training. Okay, so we'll do one Q&A a, a week. Um, and between not, between today and, and next Sunday, there will be four sessions, one Q&A &A and three training sessions. Um, so I will have Stephanie start to up, upload articles for me. And we can sort of see what what we can learn from that, what we can um, do to improve stuff. And, you know, I'll, I'll probably do some tests as well for um, the, the off-page SEO stuff, okay? We'll probably do some tests for that as well. All right. Um, I think I've covered everything. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. All right, so any more questions? Anybody? A training on a how-to post? Yeah. We've got, on Tuesday, we're going to do about niche research, okay? I'll, I'll do a how-to post on that that session, okay? Is it was a Tuesday or Thursday? Um, essentially, the quick and easy way to do it is go to Google, okay? How to promote affiliate links. I'm, I'm just taking stuff on how to make money online, okay? You'll find on a, that's all list style post. What you want to do is you want to use the how-to when you do Google search, yeah? And you want to grab three or four of these. You will put that into Affiliate Edge if it's an affiliate program, if, if it's an affiliate affiliate promotion. If it is not an affiliate promotion, take the best one, okay, the best one, and put it into the Content Edge, yeah? And that's a quick and easy way for doing a how-to post, okay? But the, I, I think that we probably could... Um, build a tool that's based on headline, like how to. And if you saw that, um, I put another PDF into the Facebook page the other day. It had, it was about niche niche research. Um, it's got some headlines, predefined headlines that you just fill in the blanks. You can use that as well. Try that in Claude, for example. That, that will work well. I haven't got that on this computer. Oh, I've got it here, hold on. See if I can get the link for this one. A second. How do we get a link for a post here? in the in that document there and um, what you can do with that is you can use those kind of headlines to predefine just fill in the blanks so that you can create articles from from titles um, it probably would be better to do articles like how to articles if you don't want to write yourself fresh if you want to just get um, an article about a topic that's been covered um, quite a lot, then go to YouTube, okay? Go to YouTube and you can take the transcript from there and you can, you know, get a how-to article from that, okay? 
I thought we were building a tool for, for that for Parasite SEO. But I don't think we have yet. Yeah. I think what I'll do with that is I will put that as the third tool in Outlook Edge. See, we've got this fresh review here. I think I'm going to make a different tool, the EEAT tool, that will be a separate plugin. But what I can do is I can put in Outlook Edge where we just put in the video URLs, okay, multiple video URLs, so we can get the transcripts and we can build um, an article from there. And you can put it in, you know, we can ask in the prompt to make it a how-to, um, but it has to be a how-to kind of article a video to begin with, yeah. Um, e E A T. It stands for uh exp it, it stand it used to be E A T, okay, where it was um expertise, authority and trust. Now Google have added an extra E, which is experience. And that, that what they're talking about is that you got first hand experience about what you're talking about. Okay. If it's a review and you're talking about Niche Blaster, that you've already used Niche Blaster, that you know what you're talking about. And how they determine that is going to be de determined by what you put into the article, okay? Um, so uh, you could, you know, show, show some kind of demonstration, et cetera, for, you know, video or screenshots and stuff like that. That would show kind of experience and at the same time the expertise which which builds the, the sort of authority and trust but it's meant in a broader sort of sense that you will know about your topic not just one article but because we're doing parasite seo they can be done on a sort of page by page article basis with reviews but in the sense of building a niche blog or something like that they would want to see topical authority on the blog about a specific topic that you know what you're talking about especially if it's things about finance and health okay <clears throat> say for example i made a website and the website was all about benefits of turmeric ben benefits of um green tea benefits of yoga benefits of that kind of thing then i would start to build a topical authority but at the same time they want some expertise and some experience. So what these guys are doing, um, the, the sort of top bloggers, the guys that are earning tens of thousands of dollars a month, they will go to extreme lengths. To, they will call up doctors, for example, and get quotes from doctors and put that into the article and link to the doctor's website and stuff like that. They go to extremes to make sure that they can pass the EAT, te EAT test, okay? And that's how they're doing it, but it's driving the rankings, which in turn is driving a lot of traffic. Some of those um, people that are doing uh, sort of niche blogging, the people on Twitter are making $70,000 a month just from informational websites. They make money from sponsorships. They make money from advertising on their website, um, affiliate links, that kind of stuff. And, and it can build up if they've got a lot of traffic <clears throat> in a specific niche that is has a demand for you know products that people sell or services people sell interesting stuff <clears throat> yeah I've, david i will get her to do that i'll ask her to do that today yeah i was actually going to cover this but it just today but it's, it's gone on too long we're already probably over two hours now okay i think that's all i've got time for my um yeah okay okay thanks david okay so we will be back on tuesday tuesday is the q a yeah we will use a separate platform i will start posting the, the links from now into the community if you are if you have already got into the community can you please go and respond to some of these posts that i've done just so that i know that it's working okay you can see i've done some posts um somebody's put a thumbs up just write anything there you can write xxx yyy or check box some of these or whatever yeah just do something so that i can see that you're able to um both make a post and also respond to posts and that should you know be easier even though it's very very simple it's got no distractions and we'll be able to just have the discussions 
and whenever I'm posting something, you can see that we've got categories. Okay, so we can stick to the same category, then we're on topic. Nice and easy and simple. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. Yeah. All right. That's it, I think. All right, guys, thank you. I'll have the, the replay in in here in this community um in a couple hours. Okay. Thanks.